Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on where you're watching us from, this is Musa Walaikipia. This is Real uh, Talk uh, today. And because we are outside somewhere and we have social distance, uh, we'll have this program when our masks are off so that we can be able, you can be able to listen to us and, and hear us and watch us, uh, you know, and so that you can be able to hear what you're saying. Real Talk today is a program that is uh, uh, run by Destiny Shapers Mentorship Program, and we are supported by Taksha Consultancy as well as actually we want to appreciate the technical team from Mount Kenya Baptist Church that they are really powering us uh, so that we can be able to have this program uh, today. Today, uh, as you know, it has been over six months since children, uh, you know, closed school because of the pandemic that has been going on. And from the time that the schools were closed, Parents have been waiting, teachers have been waiting, the society has been waiting to know when are the children going to go back to school. And there has been, a lot has been said, we wait for the calf to flatten, we wait until when, uh, you know, we have a vaccine as far as COVID-19 is concerned. But these, all these issues that have happened, they have brought a lot of, a lot, a lot of anxiety among us the parents, among us the teachers, among us the stakeholders. And therefore, that is what we are talking about today, the anxiety that is related to the school reopening. Yesterday, uh, the president was expected to give a direction on what is going to happen. While many of us, uh, the stakeholders, I am a youth mentor and I go to very many schools, I mentor the young people in schools, in churches and in the society, and many of us were expected expecting that the president would give a definite day on when the schools would reopen. And there are so many speculations that were there that the president would open the school. But the president said he does not know about when, but we need to talk about the how. And that is what our president said yesterday. And therefore, today I'm joined uh, by very two wonderful people. Uh, we'll have a parent who also happens to be a teacher, and we'll also have a counseling psychologist who, who will help us to understand, you know, what are the parents, what are the teachers, who, what is the society feeling, and more so the anxiety that is related to the reopening of schools. The person number one that, uh, you know, my panelist number one, is a friend, a person who I've known for uh, many, many years, he has been a friend, and uh, he will be in this panel wearing two hats. Atavaa kofi ambili. Kwa sababu najua pia kuna wakenya kuli ambao wanatuangalia, na pia tungependa kutumia ruga zote, both Kiswahili and English. Uh, yeye ni mzazi. Ye ana mtoto nafikiri darasa ra nile latano watatuambia. Alafu pia, uh, ba, uh, you know, akona zile fia zake kama mwalimu, uh, kama mzazi atatuambia. Na pia ya na dabo, kama mwalimu, atatuambia, what are preparation? What are the teachers, what are the, the, the teachers feeling uh, about uh, the reopening of the schools? And therefore, I want to, you to put your hands together, wherever you are watching us from, uh, to welcome a very good friend of mine. And because of COVID, we will not uh, greet each other. We just, you know, like, like put like that one and say hi. Karibu sana, Mr. Karanja. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Karibu. My name is uh, Bonfis Karanja. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher by yes. profession mm -hmm. and I'm also a parent. Yes. And uh, thank you for inviting for this uh, discussion mm -hmm. that you'll have a time to discuss and see some of the things which are happening out there. Yes. The real, yes. the reality mm -hmm. of the things happening. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, things are that you think... Th some of the things that we think we know yes and some of the things that we don't know yes and by the end of it all we'll have the professional people who come in and uh, try to help us and be able to answer those questions awesome mr karanja thank uh, let, you let, let, me, let me first of all ask you a very personal question mm. uh what what has it been for you as an individual not as a teacher or parent as an individual for the last six months you know with covid you are used for eight to five job you also serve in Awana Ministries where, you know, you interact a lot with children. How has it been for the last six months without all these things that you do as a person? Now, at the mm -hmm. beginning, mm -hmm. you know, this thing caught us unaware. Yes. We are not even prepared for what was to happen. Mm -hmm. Then when uh, the government closed the schools, mm -hmm. 
the first thing is that we are supposed to be in the in our homes yes no going anywhere mm -hmm. we don't have the information mm -hmm. this is a new thing mm -hmm. you don't know what to expect to happen mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. through the media through the things that were being told yes i think from the social media we learned that uh, even the the graph for the death in africa was expected to be too high mm -hmm. so once you have such things mm -hmm. fear creeps in mm -hmm. because you don't want to go out yes. to be affected by this thing mm -hmm. then you have kids that you want to protect in the same house mm -hmm. you want to eat yes you want to pay your house rent mm -hmm. those things are supposed to be happening mm -hmm. so at the beginning it, uh, it there was a lot of fear mm -hmm. even i remember there were even times mm -hmm. i stayed in the my house uh, in the, the small compound mm -hmm. for uh, like for a whole week mm -hmm. without going outside my gate yes. because i did not i did not know what was outside there mm -hmm. but the funniest part of all was when you you have food is uh, you want to go and buy food mm -hmm. the first thing is you go to the supermarket mm -hmm. But before you enter, yes. you first of all, see if you are counting how many people are inside. Uh -huh. and, I, and probably if you know, mm. if you would note who is this so that if they are infected, you know also you probably yes. you are at a risk. Uh, so these were the fears that we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fear also was affecting us individually. Yes. Because you have a child in the house mm -hmm. who is accustomed to be going out. Mm -hmm. Then you create a thing in your child yes. that if they go out... Yes, most likely they are going to get it. Yes. Then there are these issues where you're told mm -hmm. you can't go home to your parents mm -hmm. because you know our parents are aged. Mm -hmm. You're told they are the most vulnerable group. Mm -hmm. Then you know some of them don't even have phones. Yes. So even communicating with them, knowing how how they are doing, mm -hmm. it became a challenge mm -hmm. which we had to fight with, mm -hmm. and uh, it became a challenge. Wonderful. It was tough. Wonderful. What an introduction. And uh, for viewers that are watching us live on Facebook, we will invite you, you know, to put your comments, to put your suggestions so that we can also read your comments live on Facebook. We are live on a location. Actually, we are so happy. This is the first time we are doing on live location. This is Real Talk today. And we are talking about anxiety that is related to reopening uh, of schools. Mr. Karanja, you know, before the end of this, I'll ask you a more personal question, probably, or in terms of economics, because mm -hmm. many teachers lost their jobs. Yes. Uh, and, and, but we'll talk uh, about that uh, at, the, at the tail end of this uh, broadcast. But for today, we want to focus on the issues at hand, the anxiety that is related to the reopening of schools. And uh, you're, you're here as a teacher, and both as a parent. But, but what was re your reaction on the president's announcement yesterday? Because everybody was waiting for president to say either 2021 or October, November or December. What was your first reaction when the president said there's no definite date for open, reopening of schools? What was your first reaction as a parent? Uh, I think uh, the way president talked and some of the things that he said, mm -hmm. to me he was uh, like God sent. Mm -hmm. Because I knew people are not ready for opening. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when he talked like that, I think to me, mm -hmm. he, he, I think one of the things that I say to myself, mm -hmm. he had cries from the parents. Mm -hmm. Parents are ready for their children to go back to school, mm -hmm. but they want a proper preparation to be there. Yes. Because it's, we know it's a, a, uh, our academic year for our kids have been stopped mm -hmm. but on the other side yes we don't also want to risk mm -hmm. so to me mm -hmm. the president was god sent yes you, you see it's like he said halt mm -hmm. let's see what how far you are prepared mm -hmm. so you're saying as a parent as santi bona <laughs> yeah kabisa uh -huh. because i was happy that uh, be, because you don't want to rush yes like uh, there's a time uh, i think our cs for education said mm -hmm. it's better for our kids to be alive mm -hmm. and the year to be lost yes so you don't want to rush things mm -hmm. and when the president put that full stop yesterday for people to stop and have proper preparation mm -hmm. to me he was god sent wow wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. uh, mr president your excellency uh that is from the parents mouth that you know, your God sent, and that is, you know, some of the uh, things that the parents were waiting for you to, to say. And actually, when I posted on my wall yesterday about, you know, that decision, I could see the reaction of parents, you know, saying, you know, that was the right thing. And uh, I'm happy that you have also agreed on very many parents who uh, commented on my post yesterday on uh, Facebook saying that, uh, you know, that was the uh, kind of an uh, announcement they were waiting for. But let me ask you, as a parent, 
and after staying with your child for the last six months at home and they are safe, what are your worries as far as the school's reopening is concerned? What are those specific worries and anxieties you have as a parent? One of our worries is uh, if you look at the, the, the last six months, mm -hmm. nobody told the parents on how to prevent most of those things. Mm -hmm. And you know, through the things which are happening through the social media, mm -hmm. you're very sure the understanding about the COVID-19 is not the same. Mm -hmm. For my kid, mm -hmm. I might have been very strict. Mm -hmm. Let's think of another parent, mm -hmm. uh, because of the social status of where we are living. Yes. There are some uh, parents who, who live in a place where mm -hmm. the, there's too much openness, and uh, even the, their neighbor, the, there's no that barrier. There between. is a lot of interaction mm -hmm. among us yes. the children, yeah. Maybe for my kid, mm -hmm. I'm very strict. Yes. Now, and you see, most of the things what I've done with my child, mm -hmm. I've put a lot of do don'ts. Yes. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, mm -hmm. do this, and do this. Mm -hmm. But there are some, maybe outside there, because of uh, things which are happening, mm -hmm. we have kids who are, it's, for them, is a freestyle. Mm -hmm. So my worry is, mm -hmm. are we sure that when we come back at this time, mm -hmm. we are going to prevent it from spreading mm -hmm. and you see also due to the social media there's a lot of information out there mm -hmm. we have heard of countries where they open schools yes. the spread was too fast mm -hmm. schools had, had to be closed to close again and these are not countries like as we are third world, the third world countries yeah. they are much developed countries mm -hmm. if it is affecting their schools yes uh so my worry was mm -hmm. how sure are we yes that we're going to the things that the Minister of Health had said and education, how sure are we they are going to be to be implemented hundred mm. percent? Because some of these kids, even pre, uh, with masks, mm -hmm. you can imagine you come. Uh, is it called N, N what? N ninety five. A child with an N ninety five. Yes. And my child yes. with the one that goes for that bob. Yes. They might even try to to exchange and see how they work. And actually, I'm coming to that question, <laughs> Mr. Karanja. You know, because I want you, again, uh, let me switch gear a little bit and put you in the shoes of a teacher. Mm. Because you have now spoken as a parent mm. that there are so many uh, so many things, the do's and don'ts that you have put, uh, you know, for your son. Mm. But, but what do you think about when he's back to school? Is the teacher in a position to apply the same don'ts because we have been told that the COVID will be here for, with us for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, I read one of the news uh, in the morning and uh, they're saying the vaccine might be available for the world in 2024, not 2021, mm -hmm. 2024. So, and the countries that have the vaccine, they have said others will be available in November, but for their countries only. Yes. Who do you think the role of a teacher, is the role of a teacher going to change, you know, to, to be a parent, to say don't, don't, don't? How do, you, how do you envision? How is that going to look like for a teacher? Now, even before you go to the teacher, mm -hmm. I want you to take this child. Yes. They close the school in the month of March. Mm -hmm. And there are so many don'ts that they have been told mm -hmm. not to do. Mm -hmm. Now they come back to school, mm -hmm. they see their friends for the first time mm -hmm. after six months. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that you, you, are, you, are, you are telling them, mm -hmm. don't hug, don't have high mm -hmm. fives, mm -hmm. don't do this and this. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. you can imagine now, mm -hmm. it's as if we're introducing new greeting Let's signs. a new normal for them. <laughs> but for them, <laughs> yeah. the problem is that we as adults, mm -hmm. we're not telling them how it is done. Mm -hmm. They're seeing it on the social media and the, the, the political things which are happening within our country. Yes. Now, you, you as a teacher, mm -hmm you have a new responsibility mm -hmm. that you make sure they don't even, almost like don't even play with each other. Mm -hmm. They don't even touch. Yes. That's now the challenge that we have. Mm -hmm. Maybe for the older one, yes. they can try. Mm -hmm. But think of a school, mm -hmm. even with the nursery kids, mm -hmm. two to three years, four years, and the, then you tell them, mm -hmm. don't socialize. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So at to me, at this level, as a teacher, mm -hmm. it's a burden of another burden. Mm -hmm. Because there are, were so many things which are happening mm -hmm. that you as a teacher, you're supposed to, to be like police marking, yes. them not to do it. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, mm -hmm. you have a syllabus to cover, yes. you have yourself to protect, mm -hmm. and you have the kids to protect. Mm -hmm. And so actually I was coming there, how do you protect yourself as a teacher uh, as, as you interact with these children? How is the class going to look like? <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's social distance. Yes. Now the classes will become smaller mm -hmm. with fewer kids. Mm -hmm. Then it means the school has to look for more extra classes mm -hmm. because I'm thinking like uh, if you have like three or four class eights mm -hmm. and each class has around 30, mm -hmm. 
with the now social distance is mm. like the need around 15 to 20. Yes. So you, you almost create another six to seven classes. Mm -hmm. So meaning more personnel are needed. Yes. Uh, the school equipped for that? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I don't think they equipped for that. Mm -hmm. Then we mm -hmm. don't only think of the public schools. Yes. They're also private schools. Mm -hmm. Now the cost implication mm -hmm. is too high. Mm -hmm. Then when you put all those things together, yes. it, on short term, mm -hmm. it is almost impossible. Yes. Uh, there's a friend of mine mm -hmm. who told me yesterday, mm -hmm. you are lucky mm -hmm. you are teaching in a school yes. where all the kids are normal kids. Mm -hmm. I'm in a school mm -hmm. which is a special school. Yes. And already it's a burden mm -hmm. with these special kids yes. because most of them you have to do everything for them. Yes. Then he, she told me, you can ima now imagine you mm -hmm. add a mask on to them. Mm -hmm. They don't know what is that. Yes. Then you you try to tell a kid in a special to school keep social distance. Social distance. Yes. It is they don't impossible. Understand that. Yeah. She said it is impossible. Yes. And 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 again, mm -hmm. not even the special needs kids. Think mm -hmm. of think of the kindergarten. Uh -huh. Think of class one, two, and three. I do not think those kids will understand the, what social distance is. So that is why actually it is a, it is like the president said yesterday, it is not a matter of when it is a matter of how. Yes. Because take for example, if you have uh, seen the news yesterday, there's a school that has over 3,000 students in Kenya mm -hmm. and they have 80 classes. Mm. So actually the principal was saying that they need one mo 140 40. more classes, classes before the reopening. Yes. So I think we, we are agreeing on that one and uh, you know, it's like you, you, you went ahead and answered the question that I wanted to ask next. But I want to ask you, uh, you know, what do you think or what is your opinion on those things that should be a priority right now before reopening because we are now talking about reopening we do not know when but we are asking we are waiting to you know to to be told the how by mm -hmm. the ministry of, of education and the ministry of health but what do you think are those what we call the irreducible minimums the things that must be done in a school either private or public that at least will enable like class 8 to come back mm -hmm. you know what are those irreducible minimums that you think as a, as a teacher and as a parent that you would want to see before you are ready to say, ah, yes, I'm going to allow Mike to go back to school on Monday? Uh, I think what some of the things that the government can do for now mm -hmm. is uh, once you have all those guidelines, mm -hmm. I was thinking the best thing that the government can do is tell the teachers, go back to school, mm -hmm. sit down as a school, yes. list all the things that you need. Mm -hmm. And then look at the priorities that what are the immediate things needed. Mm -hmm. Because you might be thinking mm -hmm. these things need to be there. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the capacity to do them at, at one interval. Yes. There's one, uh, there's an, uh, a high school which is neighboring to us. Mm -hmm. And all the things that uh, one of the guys who, who works there told me that the things like for washing hands, mm -hmm. those things and all those things, mm -hmm. They were estimating that the cost alone mm -hmm. to go over 200,000 oh, on mm -hmm. sinks mm -hmm. and new extra taps because the school has over 1,000 mm -hmm. pupils. Mm -hmm. You can imagine mm -hmm. that's a government school yes. which are saying for one item mm -hmm. they need over 200,000. You know, you know, when you talk about <laughs> sinks, I, I feel like I want to interrupt you a bit and uh, I'm sorry for interruption. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and think of how primary school kids, you see, when we're talking, we're talking about. about Students who in the past ha would not even be able to control themselves mm -hmm. to to queue for food mm -hmm. or to queue for uh, you know to use that tap. How do we how do we control these children to keep social distance during washing? Continue, Mr. Karanja, so, so that we continue uh, we continue talking. Go ahead. Uh, if you look at uh, that's an example I was giving of a, a high school mm -hmm. to add those things so that they can at least have enough uh, things for washing hands and doing all those things. Mm -hmm. That's a high school. Yes. The good thing about uh, where I teach is, mm -hmm. a is a private school. Mm -hmm. Washing hands we had started last year. Yes. So that's something that we had already instilled in them. Mm -hmm. But you still you still found that uh, even before the, they had to do it, mm -hmm. they are, there was a teacher mm -hmm. just to do a bit of control. Mm -hmm. Then if you have too many of them within the school, mm -hmm. Then you try to put the social distance, uh, mm -hmm. not even the washing hands. Mm -hmm. The most technical thing I found mm -hmm. was our toilets. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine everybody is pressed up yes. uh, for, to go to the toilet. Yes. Then you tell them one meter from each other. Yes. So you, you have like 20 kids on the line waiting to mm -hmm. get inside the toilet. They'll pee on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So that's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. 
before the school opens, mm. if we can uh, do what we call the stock taking, yes. then we s from that, mm -hmm. these things to be compiled within the zonal, then they go to the district, mm -hmm. and then the education uh, department mm -hmm. see what is needed in different schools. Yes. Some schools might even, if you tell them to open today, they mm -hmm. might open mm -hmm. because they have the capability, mm -hmm. they have the uh, facilities to do it. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to look at those who can be able to do it now. Mm -hmm. Think of those that cannot be able to do it yes. and how we can be able to help. Yes. Because we don't want a school mm -hmm. that is capable of doing everything mm -hmm. to be told, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then the school that cannot be able to do it, mm -hmm. you tell them to open in intervals. Mm -hmm. Then you're making the kids in that school mm -hmm. to be ahead of others. Yeah. Is it a fair competition? No. No. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is that we want in a system that when we say we are opening, mm -hmm. At least we have like 60 or let's say 70 or 80 percent mm -hmm. of the facilities or the things that the government want to be done mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So that uh, at least even the parent from home will say, mm -hmm. I think there's a this change. Yeah. And these things to be published mm -hmm. so that parents will be able to say, when I take my child to that school, mm -hmm. I'm very sure security is there. Now, and also training to be done. Yes. Because you can't just come and, you know, if you give someone a, that, uh, is, it, is it called a thermogan? Mm -hmm. And then you are told mm -hmm. you'll be the one in charge of that. Yes. Don't, they don't even know how it is, it is done and, and what do they do so that they can get the right temperature. And you know most of these things are handled by who? Mm -hmm. Not by the teachers, yes. by the guards. Yes. The same guard that you want to be opening the gates, mm -hmm. the same guard that you want to do other things, mm -hmm. you want them to also to be using the thermal guns. <laughs> on. Let me, give, <laughs> let me give you an example of that one. There's a place I went mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they took my temperature in the sun. Mm -hmm. and, and because that the, the thermogun actually was not was not taking my temperature, it was taking the sun's temperature, you know the temperature the surroundings. And do you know what? Mm -hmm. My temperature was said to be 30, 39 point. <laughs> and I told that guy, how am I even walking? That, that I have 39, 39 point something temperature. So, uh, you know, I, I get what you're talking about and, and, and what, you're saying, uh, what you're saying as a teacher and as a parent is that both the private and uh, public schools, they, they must invest a lot in fact, yes. infrastructure, uh, you know, infrastructure wise uh, before the reopening. That, that is what you're saying. And also, mm -hmm. the other issue that we have is, you can imagine mm -hmm. you do all that mm -hmm. Then next year, yes. vaccine comes up, mm -hmm. then you're told things will go back to normal. Mm -hmm. So most of the facilities that you had invested in mm -hmm. becomes a waste. Yes. <laughs> so now what do we do? So uh, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We don't rush yes. to do things. Mm -hmm. We make sure that at least some of the things that we think can happen now, mm -hmm. can we be able to do them? Mm -hmm. But we don't also want to also delay the opening. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, uh, and we don't want to make it also to be political. Mm -hmm. We want to make it to be for the future and for the prosperity of our education system. Yes. That things that we do today, yes. politicians and other stakeholders will not come and change it in, in the next one or two years. Yes. We want something that to be consistent. Yes. We don't want things that will happen and we then we say, mm -hmm. is it uh, what all what we did mm -hmm. became a waste? Mm -hmm. So that. Uh, we don't also invest, mm -hmm. and then we cannot enjoy what we have invested in o that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's a rumor that is going around. It's not official. Mm. Uh, would you, would you as a parent, uh, you know, support the gradual reopening of schools first? We are, we are, we are talking about first, uh, first, uh, you know, reopening, whereby mm -hmm. uh, probably we we put class eight first, and mm. we put from threes and fours or from fours only. Mm. Uh, then we see that how it goes. Mm. Then. then then we because you know so that we can we can face it so that we know how how where where are we going to go wrong what can we change or are you support are we in support of that because again if we saw we waiting for january we might just wait for january but there's nothing that has been done what do you think about the gradual or phased reopening of schools gradual opening of school is okay yes but also you need to look at uh, on both sides mm -hmm. the good side of it mm -hmm. and the bad side of it mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the class eight yes. and form four. Mm -hmm. We're in the month of, uh, I think we're going to October. It's October, yeah. Which is the 10th month of the year. Mm -hmm. Meaning, in the normal education system, mm -hmm. it would be like we're only left with two months mm -hmm. before the school closes. Mm -hmm. If we open the class eight and the form fours, mm -hmm. and they take out that time, mm -hmm. and the year is over, mm -hmm. 
meaning by that they will be doing their second term uh, academic in the academic year that will be their second term mm -hmm. so by opening next year mm -hmm. you'll be doing their third that term mm -hmm. meaning by the end of the first term la next year mm -hmm. they'll be through with the academic year mm -hmm. meaning both classes will have to sit for the exams yes. so they sit for the exams mm -hmm. the results are out mm -hmm. For them, yeah. they are okay because they are, they are through with their the education. academic yeah. year. Yeah. Others can start afresh mm -hmm. next year. Yes. But let's look at the advantage, disadvantage of that yes. with the class from fours and, class and the class eight. Mm -hmm. Let's say they have done it in, f in the month of April. Mm -hmm. The results are out by end of May. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? Mm -hmm. Because if they go to form one, mm -hmm. already, there's already a form one mm -hmm. who are doing the form one for the second year. Yes. So these guys are ahead of them by almost three terms. Mm -hmm. They did this year the first term, mm -hmm. they are doing it next term, they are, next year they'll be doing another term. Mm -hmm. By the time the, the second phase of the Form 1 goes to Form 1, mm -hmm. the Form 1s who are already there, they are doing their third term. Uh -huh. Then, at the end of the, that year, mm -hmm. with the Form 1s who came in term 2 going to remain in Form 1 or they go with the other class mm -hmm. to Form 2, mm -hmm. these guys will be disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if we try it and it fails, mm -hmm. you see, we have destroyed Two, uh, two groups, two groups yeah. the class eight yeah. and the form fours. Yes. So that's why I'm saying mm -hmm. the gradual one is okay, mm -hmm. but if it, it also involves own, yeah. other classes, yes. that we, uh, there's a, there was a something going on that said the uh, form fours and classes to open, mm -hmm. then I think the class five and another class will be coming on a separate day. Yes. Another class will come that way. Mm -hmm. That one can work mm -hmm. with schools with a smaller population. Yeah. So, so you're saying the how is the how is not yes. the when is it's the how because how. I, I'm, I'm I'm envisioning a customized kind of a, a calendar. Yes. Uh, because you know, in one way or the other, all the children have lost. You yes. know, either they're in primary, they're in secondary, they're in university college. Everybody mm. has lost it mm. because you see, even the graduations. You know, they are not. You know, the pomp that uh, we would always, uh, you know, want to go to uh, to those kind of functions. So I am agreeing with you, and because of time, Mr. Karanja, mm. let me ask you this one. I know you're so passionate. Uh, you know when it comes to playing of children you know mm -hmm. you have you are involved in uh, in the past you have been involved in uh, you know uh, organizations like Kawana International and now i know you are involved in uh, GCN International yes. and one of the things apart from you know teaching child in uh, in a class mm. it has been said that uh, you know more than 50% children learn when they are playing mm -hmm. what is play going to look like <laughs> someone <laughs> said uh -huh. that uh, too much work without uh, play yeah. made a certain boy to be dull. Yes. And uh, if play is not there, mm -hmm. there's a portion of a child's life mm -hmm. that you're interfering with. Yes. And it is very crucial in, uh, in their development mm -hmm. because with their motor system, they need to touch things, they need to... These young ones have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the outside uh, world there, mm -hmm. even adults are asking for stadiums to be opened. Mm -hmm. So that you can are, go play. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we are only thinking about the adults. Uh -huh. We are not thinking about the children. Uh -huh. That we police market them, mm -hmm. that they don't interact. Mm -hmm. Then you are denying them something which is very important. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the child goes to school mm -hmm. during the break time, mm -hmm. because you don't want them to interact, you take them to the field, mm -hmm. uh, see if you have a position and point for them where they will be playing for them It'll by themselves. A little bit tricky. <laughs> so you can imagine which are, the, which are these games uh, that you need them to be doing by themselves. Yes. It becomes very hard. Yes. So you, what you might be doing, mm -hmm. you might be, that child mm -hmm. might even be better mm -hmm. in the house. Yes. Because when they are tired, mm -hmm. they can watch the TV. Yes. They can, you can have things that they can even go outside and atakama ni kuku and kwa kuku then uh, to do some things. But now, we are restricting them yes. too much mm -hmm. that they might even, uh, the anxiety that you're thinking, you're yeah, removing you are, from home. You're creating them more. It even becomes double in the school. Mm -hmm. And you know that anxiety, it will come total, then it will next to, it, who it will it affect? Mzazi. Mzazi, molimu. Not even molimu. the, the molimu. Mm -hmm. Molimu and part anxiety mm -hmm. because too much work is needed. Yes. So you're supposed to be police backing a, another person. Yes. So you might find it becomes a problem, mm -hmm. so play must be there. Yes. Can you imagine a uh, 
pipi one mtoto wa pipi one lazima anahitaji kucheza na mr karanja tunapomalizia kwa sababu nataka kupatia nafasi mm. uh, labda hatumalizi mm. uh, watazamaji wetu uh -huh. uh, lakini tunaleta you know, mtaalamu uh, counseling psychologist atakuja hivi karibuni uh, ili aweze pia kutusaidia kutatua haya mambo na ku, kuongea na wazazi kuongea na watoto na kuongea na walimu pia lakini uh, vile tunavyoongea ni kwamba jameni huyu ni mwalimu na pia ni mzazi ambaye anasema ya kwamba kucheza kwa watoto shuleni itakuwa ni shida kubwa sana. Na kwa hivyo uh, na ninajua nitauliza mtaalamu kwamba kama kwa, kutokucheza kwa hawa watoto kunaleta stress, stress ambayo hiyo anxiety kama inaweza inaweza kuwa a source of other conditions uh, so that we prepare as, as a society how do we make it better uh, for the private schools. Mr. Karanja is lucky he is in a private school. Wako na kiwanja kubwa and I was thinking if we have um, students uh, you know, like 20 students per class or 25, you can be able to put these students to play in groups in, in like, you know, you go break, uh, kuna hiki kundi, lakini it will be hard for private schools. What about public schools? Ladies and gentlemen, as we talk about the reopening, it is not a matter of only going back to class. Kuna mambo mengi sana ambayo yanazunguka. Mwalimu wanaogopa asiambukizwe na mtoto, wazazi wanaogopa mwalimu asiambukize watoto, nao watoto wanaogopa mwalimu asiambukize jameni, uh, ni jambo ambalo we must discuss the very soberly we support the ministry of education up now pia tunaomba pia waonge wakiwa soba uh, as our counseling psychologist prepares uh, mr karanja what is your what is your last you know for this program i know i'll engage you and thank you so much for your time and i know nitaendelea ku engage zaidi na pia na wazazi wengine tutaita pia principals wa mashule so that watuambie pia what are those fears uh, that they have but as a parent uh, Angalia hiyo kamera ya nyumbani na uambie, what is your last words uh, as far as the reopening is concerned? Uh, uh, to me, as mm -hmm. a parent, mm -hmm. I think for the schools to reopen, mm -hmm. need to, we have what we call the super mind. Yes. Let's discuss, let's uh, disagree, mm -hmm. and at the end of it all, yes, we shall agree. Mm -hmm. Because at the, at the beginning, mm -hmm. even a uh, minister said uh, we need, at least to open in the month of January. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating for that, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking that uh, even before we open, you can even reopen earlier. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I want us to do mm -hmm. is we sit down mm -hmm. as a parent, yes. because one of the things that some of the parents are saying, still they were ambushed mm -hmm. with this one. Mm -hmm. Some of them had already said their mind is opening in January. Mm -hmm. By now, if you think of uh, some of them have already lost mm -hmm. their, their jobs, mm -hmm. they're trying to think, where do I get the school fees? Mm -hmm. Where do I get money to feed my family? Mm -hmm. So at now, mm -hmm. let's think and think again mm -hmm. so that what we will do by reopening, mm -hmm. at least you are sure it, these are safe environment for our children to go and learn. Thank you so much. I was a tech, as our technical team prepares for a psychologist to come, let me read for you a few comments that are here. Very positive comments. Maureen George was your student. Mm -hmm. Anasema, my primary teacher back in Baptist. Good. Good to see him. Na uh, amesema ni kusei hi. Ndiyo hiyo say na say hi. A very uh, also positive comment from Joseph Karioki. Joseph Karioki is watching us all the way uh, from United States America. USA. Ile ukweli. Anasema, yeah. I think it's going to take about two years mm. before the vaccine is available for a Kenyan kid. Then anasema hii ni yako. Yeah. Anasema, Mr. Karanja, the teacher is very well informed and should be part of the government policy <laughs> group. <laughs> Unona vile, real talk today, hey. metaftia Mr. Karanja kazi. Uh -huh. Nasarikari, these are the kind of people that you should put there. And when you put him there, please make, make me uh, his secretary because uh, hakuna chakula mbaya ya mkubo inatoka kwa meza inaanguka. I so think the government <laughs> have had that. <laughs> the government has had both the county government as the national government. And that is why the real talk today is here. We come here, we discuss issues that matters. That was Mr. Karanja. Uh, mm. Thank you so uh, very much. Mr. Karanja uh, is a teacher as well as a parent. He was here giving us uh, his perspective kama mwalimu. Kwa sababu, ni vizuri kwanza tupate perspective ya walimu, ni vizuri pia tupate perspective ya mzazi, na ni vizuri pia tupate perspective ya psychologist. Na tutakuwa na wengi hata tutaleta, you know, perspective ya... Ya, ya, ya wale ambao tunaita ni washikadao, the stakeholders. We'll also call, you know, uh, the psychologists and we are going to be joined by a psychologist right now uh, so that we can be able to talk as a society. And if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, please let us know as a parent or as a stakeholder, how do you feel about the reopening of the schools? Do you think we should have phase, 
you know, kind of a setup where uh, we will send back, you know, the class 8 and the form 4s, their advantages and disadvantages of that. Do you think we need to reorganize the, uh, the, you know, the education calendar? Or what is your opinion as a parent? What are those anxieties that you're facing as a parent out there? As a teacher, what are your fears? Let us know your views. We are here to read your views uh, so that we can, we can reason together uh, as a society. As we continue with this program, you can write your comment on Facebook and I will read it uh, live so that we can be able uh, uh, to continue. I want to appreciate all those who are watching. Uh, we can see Jos uh, Joseph Karaoke, we can see Richard, uh, we can see Bob Kilonzo, uh, Maureen George, and so many other people that are watching. Asante Nisana, let's keep, uh, yeah, keep your comments coming uh, so that we can be able to, uh, to continue with this conversation. Remember that the conversation is the anxiety that is related to school reopening in Kenya. And remember that some of the groups that have been affected by this, but not limited to are students, parents, teachers, non-teaching staff, like drivers. For example, the drivers might be asking themselves, as, as a driver, as I carry these children, what is this going to happen to me? Labda mimi nitabeba watoto, halafu nikuwe affected na hiyo COVID, ama mimi mwenyewe nikuwe na hiyo COVID nilete watoto, uh, yule ambaye yako pale dining hall mzazi ambaye ana, ana serve hawa watoto labda wata interact hakuna social distance labda you know labda hawana mask there's a lot of anxieties that is related uh, to this and uh, today we are joined uh, by another wonderful lady a person who I've also known for very many years she is also a friend of mine and she's a counseling psychologist and she'll give a personal opinion as an expert in this, when it comes to anxiety, we are asking ourselves very pertinent questions. The anxiety that the teachers will have, the anxiety that the parents have, the anxiety that the children have, can it have a ripple effect that will cause a lot of other problems in our society, like depression, you know, like, uh, you know, those other conditions that we have that uh, our counseling psychologist uh, will be able to share. And our guest is none other than Tabitha Susan Wanjiko Njoroge. Karibu sana. Asante sana, Musa. Introduce yourself to our viewers. Uh, good. Uh, thank you very much, Musa. And my name is Tabitha Susan Wanjiko Njoroge, a counseling psychologist by profession, and currently on private practice uh, under Taksha Consultancy. And I'm glad to be here today. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Uh, what was your first reaction yesterday when the president, you know, you, I know your child is not yet uh, in school, but what was your rea first reaction when the president, you know, talked about uh, the reopening of the schools? That is not certain. I, I was very happy actually with, mm -hmm. that, uh, with that remark, mm -hmm. uh, focusing more on the how. Mm -hmm. Because many of the times we, we want to look at when will we open? Mm -hmm. When will our kids leave home and go to school? Mm -hmm. uh, when will we as teachers resume? Mm -hmm. When will we as uh, support staff resume work? Mm -hmm. But we forget to ask ourselves, are the systems in place? Mm -hmm. And how do we plan to do that? So yes. I was actually very happy with that uh, remark. From oh, President, on my show today, you have the second <laughs> fan. Uh, so uh, we appreciate for that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get into defining anxiety and what kind of anxieties are there, and then we come to the, you know, the COVID-related uh, and more so the reopening, mm -hmm. how has it been for the last seven months uh, as far as you are concerned, as a person, as an individual? What has been your experience, you know, during the lockdown, which has lasted like six months? Uh, personally, on a personal experience, it has been a time to also just reflect, uh, take things uh, slow. Mm -hmm. and, and also professionally, it has also been an eye-opener mm -hmm. uh, to even more people seeking professional help mm -hmm. uh, because of what they are going through. Mm -hmm. and, and even matters of anxiety, you find mm -hmm. that they find themselves feeling, I'm not in control of what is happening. Mm -hmm. So this has actually uh, taken the professional uh, counseling profession to another level mm -hmm. uh, with many people seeking uh, mm -hmm. help, mm -hmm. although others feeling we are not able to even uh, reach out mm -hmm. for these services. Do, do you think, do you, think uh, you know, the COVID-19, you know, sprouted out uh, many issues that people had? Because, you know, this, this is a time that, uh, you know, uh, there's no football, there's no, there's no chama, there's no nothing. Do you think, you know, the, the, the stress levels has gone up as far as, you know, the society is concerned? Uh, I can say that uh, COVID-19 has actually 
uh, put many people also at risk. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there are some who had the predisposition of a gene, mm -hmm. of um, maybe a mental uh, condition, mm -hmm. uh, just like you're mentioning, the depression, mm -hmm. uh, inability to even control stress. Mm -hmm. And this pandemic has brought those things in light because mm -hmm. you find that we have had more time with ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, families have found themselves at a verge of maybe conflict. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this has actually put many people at risk during this time. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, continue commenting. If you have a question uh, to our counselor, mm. you can send it on Facebook and we'll be more than glad uh, to, to read your comment or to read your question. But, 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 but we want our counselor to mm. start by, uh, our psychologist to start by defining anxiety. W when we're talking about anxiety that is related to schools reopening, what is anxiety? and how does it look like? And we, do we have types? Take, take your two minutes and explain to us what is anxiety and do we have types? And, and how, does it, how does the COVID-related anxiety, you know, how can we put it? Okay. In, in what kind of, uh, you know, uh, positioning it, if we have types of anxiety, COVID-related, what, what is it type of? Okay. Uh, uh, one, anxiety first is very normal. Mm -hmm. uh, every individual in their part of life will experience anxiety. Mm -hmm. So it's very normal to go through anxiety mm -hmm. and acknowledging it is, is okay. It's mm -hmm. very okay to acknowledge that this is how I'm feeling as a parent, this is how I'm feeling as a child, this mm -hmm. is how I'm feeling as, as a staff, mm -hmm. uh, even in a school. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we define, just like you've asked, mm -hmm. Uh, anxiety is that constant fear and worry mm -hmm. of what is ahead. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that you're now not going through the kawaida anxiety, if I may use that word? Mm -hmm. uh, if you find yourself having persistent uh, fear and worry, as I have said, mm -hmm. of some of the scenarios around you, this actually results to or rather warrants you to seek uh, professional help. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have been in lockdown and uh, in this state for six months now. Mm -hmm. And if you found yourself with that constant symptoms, like I'm going to, to mention some mm -hmm. of them, that tells you that you actually now have something that is more. Yes. Uh, you've asked if there are types. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have types of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And some of the types we have, uh, separation anxiety is one of them, mm -hmm. whereby you find yourself uh, having the fear of being separated with people who have been close to you. Mm -hmm. Also, there is another type of anxiety uh, whereby you're now afraid mm -hmm. of the social spaces mm -hmm. and that results to phobias. Mm -hmm. And we have phobias of going to public places and we are going to see mm -hmm. some of our population mm -hmm. uh, probably will find themselves experiencing these phobias mm -hmm. uh, even as we are moving forward. Mm -hmm. And also there's now the generalized anxiety. This mm -hmm. is that first type of anxiety where you're just experiencing uh, the symptoms yes. uh, but this has to be consistent for children in um, four weeks mm -hmm. and for adults within six months uh, actually it's uh, you have almost answered my second question mm -hmm. on uh, you know what are those specific worries mm -hmm. uh, and anxieties that uh, are related to reop uh, schools reopening mm -hmm. and one of these you have said the socio the social spaces mm -hmm. but but as, a, as as an expert as you think of the reopening of the schools mm -hmm. what are those anxieties that that, that you think are related, you know, with, with, you know, parents, teachers, you know, apart from the social spaces. Any, mm -hmm. What is your, your, your general view as an expert? Um, one also, the separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have found ourselves in a space where we have uh, confided with our kids, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. We have uh, spent more time with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. And now we are getting to that uh, new normal mm -hmm. of, leaving mm -hmm. our comfort space to now another world. Mm -hmm. So kids who are probably in boarding school will mm -hmm. feel now I'm leaving my parents in one county and I'm traveling all the way to another county to mm -hmm. go to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. So there is that separation. A parent may also feel the same. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you are not used to go through public transport. Now mm -hmm. you're being told you're going to be using the bus mm -hmm. back home. Mm -hmm. uh, that means you are going to be with your friends in mm -hmm. the same bus. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are some of the things and some of the anxieties that we may find ourselves experiencing. Very good. Um, we said that our viewers can also uh, write questions on Facebook and we'll read them. And we have our first question, who, uh, very, a very interesting one. And I think, uh, you know, one of the fears that we have is the fear of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And Joseph Karaoke 
is asking or, or is uh, commenting and says, tell her to talk about the fear of tomorrow and the anxiety that is associated with it. The fear of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and anxiety that is associated because the fear that parents have is the fear of the reopening of schools, which is not today, mm -hmm. is on an uncertain day that we don't know. Yeah. So what, what can you say th about that as an expert? Uh, first, that is a very good uh, comment. Mm -hmm. And indeed, most of us are having that fear of what is yet to come. The fear of the unknown. We are mm -hmm. not sure what are, what are we going into, what are we getting into. Mm -hmm. uh, one, it's okay to mm -hmm. feel that way. Mm -hmm. It's very okay to experience and be uncertain of what tomorrow holds. Yes. Uh, however, we need to also ask ourselves, mm -hmm. what are you in control over? Mm -hmm. Is tomorrow something you are in control of? Mm -hmm. If it's not, mm -hmm. uh, we can now f ch channel that energy to what can I, what am I in control of? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in control of maybe ensuring that I keep safe and stay safe. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm not in control over, I will take that day at a time, mm -hmm. uh, as I like saying. Take, take, take one day at a time. Yeah. You know, yes, we, we, one of the th common things that we are agreeing, mm -hmm. and Mr. Karanja has agreed, and you are agreeing, mm -hmm. That yes, anxiety and worries that are COVID related and the reopening is is there and we we all have it. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally had a, you know in the beginning I I had a lot of fear on going out. I have a small baby. My eye, uh, you know, will I go get the? I remember uh, the virus and bring home. I remember the first, the second, actually, the third week of COVID. I got a very, you know, uh, engaging job with Kenya Red Cross. I'm a volunteer, mm -hmm. and and the whole one week that I was out of my house, I was afraid that am I going to catch this virus and bring it home. So I had that fear. But now, how do we handle the fear and anxiety because it is there. It is with us. You know, how do we handle it? Because Mr. Karanja told us the fear is there. The children are afraid. The parents are afraid. The teachers are anxious. Mm -hmm. How do we handle it from a professional level? What, what is your advice to us? Because we all have anxiety. <laughs> One, acknowledge. Yes. Two, normalize these conversations. Mm -hmm. In your house, with your close friends, mm -hmm get to also pick the feelings mm -hmm. uh even as a person mm -hmm. uh you can either write them down you can hold a conversation with your kids mm -hmm. uh, get to know what what are some of the emotions that are coming about mm -hmm. uh when they think of now maybe even the reopening of the schools mm -hmm. uh, because you may be actually going through this anxiety mm -hmm. but you're not talking or you're not having someone to talk to mm -hmm. And at times you have even tried talking, mm -hmm. even among a, a family, and you're not still able to get over it. Mm -hmm. There you can also seek professional help. Talk yes. to a professional who will help you go through that. So you, you, you acknowledge that you have that worry, yes. and the reopening worry will be there. It is, it is not disappearing. Mm -hmm. It is with us. And even as, as we have all the measures in place with the government, you're telling us that the fear will be there, yeah. anxiety will be there. So our... As as parents and the stakeholders in the education sector is number one to acknowledge the problem is there. And then number two, you normalize, you know, these kind of conversations. And then number three, if, if it persists and that is where now we are coming, you seek professional help. When do you seek professional help as far as anxiety is concerned? When is, when, when, when is it that you say, this now I need to go to a counselor? Mm -hmm. when, when is that time? Because many people, we are anxious, but we do not know when is this anxiety supposed to, to you know, when am I supposed to see a professional? Uh, even when you find that some of the activities you normally used to do mm -hmm. have now been affected. Mm -hmm. uh, socially, you find the anxiety is crippling mm -hmm. your day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. uh, emotionally, previously you were actually in control, mm -hmm. but now you find you're not able to just hold in mm -hmm. uh, that anxiety mm -hmm. also now you find that you even worry mm -hmm. even when the worry should not be there for instance uh, you've just sent your child uh, out to maybe throw garbage mm -hmm. they have not interacted with anyone <laughs> yes. but you still find uh, yourself uh you're you are constant, putting them in sanitizer <laughs> yeah you have that constant uncontrollable yes. uh, -huh. uh fear and worry just like we have said mm -hmm. uh about it mm -hmm. and you even find yourself now getting even panic attacks. Yes. 
a panic attack may not be uh, <laughs> let, let, let me let me cut problem. you short let yeah, me cut ahead. you short mm -hmm. let me cut you short because this one is funny mm -hmm. uh today i i saw one of my friends who is a pastor in zambia mm -hmm. uh and uh he's traveling back to us yes. and and uh he what he did when he was getting into a plane mm -hmm. you know one, one one two of the guys that were there they had ppe or <laughs> from head to toe yeah. you know, can, can you say that one is uh you know too much like like if you're wearing ppe's out instead of a mask and social distance do you think that is too much of anxiety as you continue with you know when uh, we may not say it may be too much mm -hmm. maybe for for these two individuals or rather the individuals involved yes um, felt that this is what I'm in control I'm in control of I have an available <laughs> PPE in my house uh, I just want to take extra caution yes uh, for them maybe they felt that is what they would have controlled uh -huh. However, you may find that now you're not able to interact mm -hmm. as you used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so taking extra caution is good. But yes. you, when you find that your uh, spheres of life are being affected, that yes. is also a call to just talk to someone. Awesome. Anything it. else that, uh, you know, you, when you see this is, this, is, this is it, you need to see a counselor. Any, anything else that you've left out? Uh, also sleep disturbances. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You find you're also not eating properly. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have started uh, not taking care of your own personal grooming. Mm -hmm. um, it's also important to just uh, go that step further because maybe the anxiety is being linked to something that is more, something mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. It is just not just about the COVID, yes. but something that is going within yourself. And, and actually that is almost our, our last question as I, as I give you an opportunity probably to, you know, to talk to the parents and everyone of us about, mm -hmm. about the anxiety. Yeah. Uh, you know, what about those underlying conditions? There were people, there were children, there were parents, there were, there were you know, the, the stakeholders of education. There were people who had uh, still underlying conditions yeah. that do you think now with those con kind of those conditions, it will worsen with the anxiety that is related to reopening of schools? Um, that's actually a very uh, good question. Mm -hmm. uh, the spe we may even put it uh, the special population mm -hmm. whereby now with the new guidelines that have been uh, given in place, you mm -hmm. maybe you had a child uh, with a breathing uh, problem mm -hmm. and now COVID-19 is predisposing them. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also a concern and it may also increase your levels of anxiety, mm -hmm. not knowing mm -hmm. what measures have been given, mm -hmm. uh, even to the school that your child is going to. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's also important to also get the relevant information mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. uh, see how well uh, your institution is prepared mm -hmm. and also look for other sources of plan B also. Awesome. You have heard it uh, from the expert. But before we come to the tail end of this uh, yeah. conversation, uh, we want to encourage uh, our viewers to keep on commenting. Uh, even as we come to the end, we we'll, uh, keep viewing this video. Let us know you, what you think about the conversation. Let us know what anxieties that uh, you have out there. Mm -hmm. Let us know the concerns you have so that uh, even on site uh, we can be able to chat and we can be able to ask uh, kindly our uh, psychologists to be able to help us uh, uh, tackle that. You know, watch that, take that camera and talk to the parents, talk to the stakeholders of uh, education in terms of anxiety and as an expert, what you would want them, you know, to, to, you know, to do do's and don'ts, you know, take it, take it as, a, as an expert because we are talking about anxiety that is related to the reopening of the schools. Mm -hmm. You have had a teacher talking, you have had the, the views of a parent, you know, what is your, you know, like your parting shot, you know, to our society mm -hmm. as far as this is concerned? Uh, this is actually a moment for all of us to plan. And as we are now looking at the how, parents, you are at home with your children. As we've said, let's normalize these conversations. Let's listen to our children. What are some of the anxieties? What are they going through? Uh, so having these conversations at home will help. Uh, if you have also uh, groups uh, that you can communicate with your teachers, with your management of where your children are going to school, this will also help to uh, give you that sense of uh, security and also uh, safety that these are the plans that are underway. And also now for the education sector, uh, many children will travel from various counties to go to school and they are going through many psychological issues so it's important to also have a psychosocial support uh, system uh, in place uh, so that when the children come back to school it's just not uh, education as normal but we can also listen to them again uh, get to see what they picked uh, during the COVID uh, period also the 
staff will also need this psychosocial support. So let's also normalize putting these systems uh, in place as we are now working on the reopening. So mine is to say thank you. Thank you so much. We have a space for one more question because okay. our, our viewer has asked one, one question. How do we talk to children who cannot verbalize fear and anxiety? Mm -hmm. These are children who cannot talk. Mm -hmm. The children who probably are one, one and a half years, two years, they cannot be able to, to verbalize the anxiety. Mm -hmm. How do we tackle those kind of children? Uh, that's actually a very good question. Mm -hmm. And children are very expressive, mm -hmm. if I may use that word. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, pick a plain paper, mm -hmm. uh, come with coloring, crayons, uh, give them mm -hmm. uh, to them, mm -hmm. uh, ask them to draw mm -hmm. and just express. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even tell them to draw anything. Mm -hmm. And you may find that the energy they are going to use on that paper, the specific colors they are going to put on that paper will mm -hmm. actually give you and allow them to express what is inside. Also, play therapy is important. Mm -hmm. uh, get them to play with toys. Uh, sand also is important. And if you find that you're not having uh, a clear analysis of what is happening to your child, mm -hmm. uh, you can seek professional help and the counselor will help to just bring out what the child is not speaking. That you have had it both from a parent mm -hmm. and you have had it from a teacher mm -hmm. and now you have had it from an expert. Some three things that I've uh, captured from the psychologist. Number one is that we must acknowledge that the fear is there. One of the things that we do is to deny. Let's accept that the fear is here and is with us. Then number two, normalize these kind of conversations. Talk to people. Create WhatsApp groups, you know, uh, call people, get into Zoom so that you can be able to understand how other people are feeling at this time. And then number three, if it persists, Seek professional advice. You have heard it. In the last six months has not been very simple for us as a society. It has not been simple for the church. The church has gi been given now an opportunity at least to, you know, to get the, uh, you know, people back to church at least a third of, you know, the congregation. Mm -hmm. The bars were opened yesterday. Everybody is, has anxious. But one of the things that is really disturbing our society is the reopening of schools. Mm -hmm. And this anxiety is real. And therefore, this is just the beginning of these conversations where we'll engage the stakeholders to understand how they feel so that even the Ministry of Education makes uh, its decision, it will be an informed decision. So that we do not you know, uh, make a decision that will affect our generations. If we reopen the schools earlier, if we reopen class 7 and 8, it will affect uh, class 8 and form 4, it will affect all the other classes. If we reopen uh, the whole school, people have lost their time. Thank you so much. This has been Real Talk today that was supported by Destiny Shepherds Mentorship Program. And I want to really appreciate the Mount Kenya Baptist Church Technical Team led by Pastor Andrew Letsom and Steve Njero being behind the camera. Thank you so much, guys. And I want also to appreciate Fidel, Ole Fidel of Masai Leather Collections uh, for making sure that uh, uh, many people are watching us on Facebook. This is just the beginning of these conversations. We say, let's keep talking because the moment we stop talking will be the moment that we get confusion and we start fighting. This has been your host, Musa Walaikipia. God bless you and have a good day, a good night, depending on where you're watching from. Asante Nisana. Thank you so much.